Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studio and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm sharing a few interior lighting tips you should know. Welcome back to another interior lighting tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you three ways you can use the V-Ray two-sided materials to improve your interior lighting and add more realism to your renders. And before we get started, let's take a quick look at our scene's lighting setup. So we have our material override switched on. This is a great feature to use when testing your lights. As for the environment lighting, I have a basic HDRI. So when you select your HDRI, you want to hold shift. This is going to bring in the dome light without any texture. And this gives you a little control over what color the dome light is going to emit. So if you check the color picker and try different colors, you can see how that affects the lighting. I also have a very high intensity value because I want tons of light coming in from the outside. On top of that, I have some curtains in front of the windows blocking that light. But I compensated that with a few spotlights in the interior. So when you select your spotlights, you want to hold shift to set the direction. The next click is going to set the cone angle. And the last one is going to set the penumbra angle. So this is our scene, very generic lighting. And this is what's going to be our starting point. Before we continue, a lot of time and effort goes into a video like this. So if you could gently give this video a like, and if you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. This helps with the growth of the channel and keeps you notified the next time we drop a new video. So the very first tip is to use a V-Ray two-sided has a curtain material. This is a special V-Ray material that lets you see the light through the backside of the object. This is very common for objects with thin translucent surfaces such as paper, cloth, curtain, and leaves. And I have a couple of these in my scene that could benefit from this material, such as the curtains over here, the center pendant light, and the two floor lamps. So on my curtains, I have a standard fabric materials. So let's replace that with a two-sided material so we can bring a little more light into the scene. So let's go into the assets, materials, and let's select two-sided material. If you look at the settings, it's asking you for a front and a back material. And these materials correspond to the sketch of front and back faces. So for the front material, I'm going to select the standard fabric I already have applied in my curtain. And for the back material, I'll select a different fabric with a different color. As you can see on the preview, we have a mixture of both front and back material. And we can adjust this using the translucency slider. By adjusting this setting, we're going to determine which material is more visible relative to the camera. So if we push the slider towards the black color values, we're going to see more of the front material. And if we adjust towards the white color values, we're going to see more of the back material. So typically you want to be somewhere within the gray color values, which is going to give you a mixture of both. You can also use a texture to control the translucency. So you can see how a mix of these values affect the visibility of both materials. So for this example, we're going to keep it simple and we'll use the same material for both front and back materials. As you can see, we are using the override material for the entire scene. So don't forget to uncheck the override option for this material so we can exclude it from our rendering results. So now that we have our two-sided curtain material ready, let's apply it to the scene by replacing it over the current fabric material. So let's right click on our two-sided material and select the use as replacement option. And now head over to the current fabric material, right click and select replace in scene. And as you can see, our two-sided material is now applied to the curtains. 
We also have this option, which is the multiply by front diffuse. This simply means that the diffuse of the front material will have a bit more impact on the rendering result. Moving on to tip number two, and that is to use the translucency attributes on your V-Ray materials. However, you want to use this on materials close to V-Ray lights so you can add translucency details to certain objects. So let's move on to our center pendant lights, which is a very simple model made out of components. And we can use the translucency attribute on this material so we can give the lights a more realistic feel. So first, let's add lights inside our components. And for these, I'm going to add a sphere light. As for the setting, let's set the intensity to 100 and add a warm tone to the light temperature. So somewhere around 3000 Kelvin. As for the material on the spheres, we can treat it as glass or plastic. And if we want it to act as a two-sided material to see the lights inside, you can go into the attribute settings and select translucency from the options. If you take a look at the settings, I'm going to add a somewhat similar material, maybe just a little bit darker, so I can achieve a very subtle effect. So this is a result very similar to what you would get from a two-sided material, but let's get a little crafty with the settings and add some textures to the mix. So let's add a gradient texture. As for the settings, make sure that it's a vertical transition, white being on the bottom, transitioning all the way to black at the top. Since we're using a procedural texture, we also need to enable the binding options. And because this is a sphere, let's use the spherical projection to fix the UV coordinates. And this is the result using the gradient texture to manage the translucency between the materials. Very interesting results. This is another example using the fall of textures and it really shows you how creative you can be using the procedural maps. And for the final tip, we're going to make some improvements to our two-sided materials to add even greater details to our light fixtures. So next, we're going to adjust our full lamps. I already have everything set. If we take a look inside the model, there is a mesh light with a high intensity. And this material already has a translucency attribute. And this is a quick render. It looks pretty good already, but something that adds a little more realism to these lamps is when you can see the framing through the light. And if you look at these example, I'm referring to these lines that are part of the framing inside the lamp. So you can add these details into the model, or you can try this material setup that I'm about to show you as an alternative. So let's go to our diffuse setting and let's wrap the diffuse texture in the mix operator. And with this function, we can blend two textures together. So on top, we have our main texture. And at the bottom, we're going to add a grid procedural texture. As for the settings on the grid, it's a matter of trials depending on the design of the lamp. So I'm going to adjust these settings so I can only see the horizontal lines. Next, I need to repeat these lines on the vertical axis. So let's head over to the texture placement and try some values on the repeat UV settings. So for this example, I'm going to try 60 so I can have 60 repetitions of that line in the vertical axis. And the last step is to set the blending mode to multiply, which is going to bring both of those textures together. And this is our result. You can see the light through the material, but since it's mixed with a dark grid, it gives the intention that there is framing inside the lamp. And if you want to add a little more detail, you can use that same grid texture as a bump map as well as a displacement.
And these are a couple of other examples where this material setup can really take your lighting skills to the next level. And speaking of skills, I know a great place you can sharpen your skills for free and that's why we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning, wants to explore their creativity, and learn a new skill. One of my goals this year is to improve my YouTube channel. So one of the classes I'm always revisiting is YouTube success, script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. As you know, Marquez is a very successful YouTuber, and in this class, he takes you through his creative process, teaching you how to come up with video ideas, writing scripts, shooting your videos, and eventually growing your YouTube channel. However, if your goal is to improve your VRA skills, then you may want to check out VRA 5 for SketchUp Masterclass by Minish Paul Simmons. This is a complete VRA Masterclass structured in a way that's very easy to learn. The entire class shows you how to create an interior scene from start to finish while showing you all the essentials of VRA 5 for SketchUp. So if you're serious about achieving your goals this year, Skillshare is the best place to invest in yourself and in your personal growth. Skillshare classes are ad-free, so you can always stay in the zone. New premium classes are added each week, so there's always something new to discover. And their entire catalog is available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. So if you want to take advantage of this opportunity, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description, as well as our code TN30STUDIO, will get a one month free of Skillshare. So we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And to conclude with this video, anytime you want to improve your interior lighting, then consider using the V-Ray 2 sided material as well as the translucency attribute on materials such as your curtains and other fabrics, as well as certain materials on your lighting fixtures. And so I want to thank you guys for watching all the way till the end. Be sure to click that Skillshare link in the description. You can also use our code TN3DStudio and you can take advantage of their amazing classes. Be sure to also check out our 3D store for any free files as well as for this scene when it becomes available. And also I want you guys to leave a comment down below. What do you do to improve your interior lighting? Let me know if the video helped and if you learned something new. As always, thank you for watching. Be sure to follow us on other social media platforms and I'll see you guys next time.